Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. This week we've got a new saber-toothed cat, how crocs kept cool, and someone squished Crassigerinus. Also I had a haircut. First up in the Paleo News this week is a new paper that has changed our view on the anatomy of Crassigerinus, an early tetrapod. Crassigerinus scoticus is known from fossils found in Scotland and Canada, dating to over 330 million years ago, and it was first described back in 1926. This new publication explains how previous reconstructions of this animal, which was a fairly large predator for its time, reaching up to 2 meters long, had been based on specimens with incomplete and damaged skulls. This new research, though, has used computed tomography methods to scan four different specimens and recreate the skull anatomy more accurately finding that it actually had a much more flattened head than previous reconstructions show. They also examined details of the jaw joints and the teeth, finding that Crassigerinus was a very capable aquatic predator that was adapted for taking out large prey. So, a very interesting revision of a unique early tetrapod, and it's also nice to see Jenny Clack on the authorship, a legendary early tetrapod worker who sadly passed away in 2020. Next up, there's been a paper published which has found that the Thalatosuchians, the marine crocodilomorphs of the Jurassic and Cretaceous, had a novel way of keeping cool. The paper explains how Thalatosuchians actually share an unusual bit of anatomy with living whales and dolphins, pairs of long grooves running from the front to the back of the bony palate. In modern whales, these grooves house a large artery that supply a venous structure within the mouth that helps in the thermoregulation of the cranium. Well, this new research finds evidence that this is probably what the structures were used for in Thalatosuchians too, with canals linking the nasal and oral cavities which most likely housed arteries and veins that connected structures in the palatal region to the endocranium. This would then have allowed for more efficient heat exchange, which was needed in these reptiles as they had an increased amount of blood flow and blood volume in their heads compared to other crocodilomorphs, as indicated by large canals found in their skulls. It's a very cool bit of research, and a really interesting example of convergent evolution between two totally unrelated groups of animals. And finally for this episode, there's been a paper describing a new species of saber-toothed cat. Amphema chirodus hejingensis has been named based on a skull found in northern China that dates to around 9.8 to 8.7 million years ago. This is now the most basal, or primitive, species of the Amphema chirodus genus found so far and interestingly has quite sideways oriented orbits for the eyes, suggesting that this cat was better at observing its surroundings rather than singling out specific prey, which the authors interpret as being an adaptation to an open environment or an indicator of social behaviour. More evidence for social behaviour in these cats comes from the description of a forelimb attributed to the Amphema chirodus genus but not specifically to the same species, which shows a healed injury that would have severely impacted the individual's ability to hunt and yet it clearly survived for a while after sustaining it, suggesting that it may have been looked after by others. The study also analyzes the rate of evolution of traits in these cats, finding that this new species represents an important transition that led to these animals adapting to open environments and then eventually dispersing widely across the planet. It therefore seems as though the evolution of being suited to open environments and social behavior occurred in this area near the Tibetan Plateau, as the region became more arid. A very significant paper there then, with all sorts of amazing implications for this fantastic group of animals. Well that's it for this week, I really hope you enjoyed learning about all these amazing paleontological developments, there's always so much and it's fantastic to see, and we'll see you in the next episode.